Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about leashy picks. I just started getting into these about a month ago, maybe two months ago. I started collecting as many of the commercial and residential leashy tools as possible. I have owned and purchased uh, automotive leashy picks in the past, but today's video will only be about the commercial residential line of genuine and original leashy picks. Uh, to date, I currently have 11 leashy picks in my collection. There are three more that I could obtain, but they only pertain to mailbox locks, which is a federal crime to tamper with, and I don't own any currently in my possession. And uh, there is one for office or file cabinet style wafer locks. And I honestly have no need for that either. I'm not a locksmith currently, and I don't have any trouble picking wafer locks whatsoever. So I just don't see a benefit in purchasing those. However, because I am a collector and a completist, I'm sure at some point when I can catch them on sale, I will complete this collection. But currently, outside of those three leashy tools, there are my 11 in my collection plus three, so that's 14 on the market today. This is important to note because just as little as three years ago, around 2020, there were probably only maybe five. So the collection is growing of what is available on the market for the general public and locksmiths alike. So let's get into it. In my collection, I have the Quickset 1, the, the Quickset 5, the Schleg 1, Schleg 4, Schleg 20, Schleg C123, S123, I have the Master Lock M1, I have the American Lock AM5, the Lockwood LW5, the Best Lock 2 6 pin, and the Best Lock 2 7 pin. One thing somebody may be noticing is that I don't have any tensioners on the left side of my picks. I have them on the right side of my picks and we will get into that. And I did a little bit of research prior to making this video. I am the only person on YouTube to date that will show you that you can remove the tensioner and flip it to the other side for, for, for conventional tensioning methods. And I honest to God, as of today, uh, posting this video nobody else has done that and it makes me wonder if everybody's using their picks wrong because I was for the last month but we will get into that first let's talk about original leashy genuine leashy the difference between the two the history of the two first let me give credit where credit is due first off I did pull up this information from the internet so no surprise there but I also did a lot of research and watched YouTube videos credit goes out to Bosnian Bill lock picking lawyer and deviant Olaf for their YouTube contributions. Let's start off by reading today's original Lishi tools are the brainchild of Zikin Li or Zichin Li. These amazing tools were invented in early 2000 in response to the need to help his locksmith friends and his trainees. Mr. Li is a master locksmith and tool inventor living in Hebei province, China, Original Lishi Tools started as a backyard factory and has grown to an enterprise that now employs over 30 people working in two shifts. In fact, in late 2017, Mr. Lee relocated his factory due to increased demand for his incredible products and is now in a much larger facility. An increase in factory size means that he will be able to constantly update and develop new tools for locksmiths worldwide. This will help his strong desire to help those that are brothers in the locksmithing industry. Original Ishi Tools is at the forefront of automotive lock picking and decoding technology and we plan to stay there. Our extremely high quality control procedures and manufacturing process ensure that each original Ishi tool will withstand the rigors of daily use and will provide years of service. Unlike our competitors and knockoffs, our tools are guaranteed to do what they are designed to do without breakage or other issues. So Lishi tools started showing up on the market around the early 2000s by way of vehicle entry tools. This is a genuine Lishi tool to be uh, differentiating itself from the original Lishi tool. It's just a different distributor and we will get into that as well. This is a BM2, so this would have access to what was my previous I had a BMW 328i, uh, manufactured 2011. So I used to be a locksmith and, for a very short time, and I also worked for a company called Lock, Papa Lock, where I was trained in vehicle entry techniques. BMWs have what's called a relocking system, where uh, most models of BMWs will have 
a feature on the center console where you have to flip a switch and then you have 10 seconds to, to pull on the door handle uh, twice inside of that 10 second time frame. Otherwise it'll relock itself and the alarm will go off. That is very hard to do with a reach tool to try to manipulate a button on the center console and then reconfigure that reach tool to be able to pull the door handle twice. Because by extension, the Mini Coopers are also owned by BMW, they have the same relocking system. So if I were to invest $150 into a Leashy tool, which was the cost of this particular tool in 2017, I would put my money into tools that are nearly impossible to break, not break into, to get into, as that was my job as a locksmith. And because I owned this particular vehicle, the BMW 328i, manufactured 2011, it was behoove of me in my best interest to purchase this particular tool in case I were to lose my $400 key fob. That is the purpose of Leashy Auto Tools. Not only as a homeowner, but for emergency situations, as a locksmith, I could also decode this and ask for a factory cut of the door, but I still would have to request the key code from Germany to be able to make an actual key fob to work for the ignition on a BMW. So that is the purpose of the decoders of a Leashy tool. Now we enter Sometime around five years ago, 2017 to 2020, we started seeing the arrival of residential and commercial leashy tools. These things are true game changers. I love them. They do work 30 to 50% of the time. When they don't work, it's just because locks are picky, pun intended, and it's probably also a little bit of user error, but we will get into that as well. Now then, before we start talking about where my tension wrenches are that you will not see here, let's talk about the stickers that are on the back of these guys. Some of these guys have red stickers on the back. It's a, it's a, some of them have a little hologram. Some of them have just a QR code underneath a scratch off, like you would see on a lottery ticket. So that one's red, this one's green. So we have two different leashy products here. One is red and one is green. What is the difference between these two? Let's take a look. And credit goes out to Deviant Olaf for this information. The original uh tools are a separate company for distribution. Red Label Tools. Those are made by James Chen. So it's either C-H-E-N or Q-I-N. So James Chen, original Leashy Tools. The genuine Leashy.com is another separate company for distribution. Green Label tools are a relationship for Mr. Lee for distribute, distribute, distribution outside of China. Uh, possible that Genuine Lee she separated from Mr. Lee and from the original Lee she factory, but still have the license to use the name and tooling, but no longer at the same factory. Colored stickers are, are known exporters of Lee she tools. So if you come across a Lee she tool, regardless of it being genuine Lee she, or being an original Leashy. If it has a red sticker on the back, which by the way, these can be counterfeited too, I'm sure, but to my knowledge, if they have a green green sticker or a red sticker on the back, they are a direct design from Mr. Zikin Lee, who is the inventor of Leashy Tools. If they don't have a sticker on the back, regardless of whether they have an oval or if they have a square or if it has an image, but they have a sticker, or excuse me, if they don't have a sticker, then they're probably going to be some person's version of what are now being called leashy style picks. Leashy style picks are very common in the United Kingdom. That will be another video review in the future when I have more information and more experience with those. But those are becoming very prevalent for a lot of European uh, style profile cylinders as well as a uh, Yale. Uh, keyways. So there's a whole slew of, of leashy style picks that we can get into down the road. But right now we're just talking about actual leashy tools that come from the factories that are um, sanctioned under Zikin Lee of Hebei province. So that is the whole deal with the sticker. That is the difference between original leashy versus genuine leashy. And from the research I've been able to find and the fact that I own several general, uh, genuine leashy versus original leashy, this is a genuine leashy, they're the same. It's good quality. It's all the same craftsmanship. It's the same tooling technologies. It's all the same. It's all good stuff. Um, moving forward, let's talk about the collars and the tension wrenches. 
you will see that all of mine in my collection of 11 picks all have flat collars. These collars are very unique because the collars are not seen on any of the automotive ones. Therefore, buyer beware, if you were to buy a leashy pick case to put your leashy picks inside of, most of the leashy, all of the leashy picks on the current market today as of July of 2023, those pick cases are only designed to hold the automotive leashy picks that have this slimline um, build to them. They don't have a collar here for tensioning. And it's because you don't really have to apply that much tension on a uh, wafer style uh, lock or a track style lock that you would see on a vehicle. But we do have to apply a, a, an absorbent amount of tension, absorbent. We do have to apply a lot more uh, atten attention to a pen tumbler style lock that we will see in North American locks. So I believe that that is the purpose of the collar. The Original collars prior to 2020 would have been rounded, and those would have been on the red label uh, leashy picks, the original leashy picks. Uh, original being the brand, not necessarily that they are the, that they are more authentic. So they would have been the rounded collar. After 2020, the new practice in manufacturing these are these flat collars right here. So if you find any leashy picks with a rounded collar, they may be collectible. They uh, were also more expensive. I remember when these hit the market, they started out at about $150 in American USD, and they kind of settled around for about two years at about $125. I remember when they started hitting around the $110 mark, $100 mark, and I wanted to pull the trigger and purchase them, but I just wasn't ready yet. At that time, there were only four leashy picks available. It was typically the KW1, an American lock, and maybe a Schleg lock. Uh, obviously, the collection has expanded. Now you can get these on the market at by July of 2023 for as low as $75 on most websites. However, recently there are a lot of July 4th sales and some of these picks were discounted down to the low price of $50 each. So after just three years of being on the market, these are now being sold at 30% of the original manufactured suggested uh, price. So 30% is huge. That means the factoring process is, is getting quicker and better at pumping these tools out. And these are highly sought after tools. The supply and demand is there. So let's continue talking about this collar. Uh, traditionally, these are given to the new owner with this collar placed on the opposite side. So this collar comes loose with this set screw and this Allen key. And these collars come with this tension, this tensioner arm right here. And this is how you're presented with the pick inside of its pick case. They come in these pick cases right here. The, these pick cases can be uh, coupled together and, and create what I would call a hotel of leashy picks, which is really great. They, they couple together on the sides and top and bottom, but they come in here and each one of these picks will arrive with a, a hex key such as this. And they always put it at the bottom. So every time you pull it out to look at the leash you pick, this hex key falls out. And I kept thinking, why are they on earth are they giving us this hex key? And I thought for the longest time that the hex key was for replacing the actual pick. You can buy these picks individually for about $10. A lot of these picks are universal. For instance, a quick set uh, pick is probably going to be the same for a Schleg pick. And uh, the Schleg will probably be the same across all the other Schleg picks. They're all similar to my knowledge. I've, I've read reviews online where people have purchased different style uh, locks, let's say SC4 and an SC1, and then a, a quick set one picks for $10 each, and they got a package of three of these and they were all the same. So I thought that's originally what this set screw was for. It is not. The set screw is for being able to remove the tensioner to place on the other side of the pick. My, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time that you will see any of this on YouTube. I reviewed over 10 videos between yesterday and today from Bosnian Bill, Lock Picking Lawyer, Deviant Olaf, and none of them had discussed this particular principle and how to reverse the tensioning. Traditionally, as these things are mailed out to the owner, the tensioner comes in this particular uh, fashion. And therefore, when you are picking a lock, you are required, if you are a right-handed picker and you tension with your left hand, to provide tension with your thumb going clockwise and counterclockwise in this particular fashion. Whereas most lock pickers are trained to use their index finger 
or their thumb in a counterclockwise fashion on the opposite side of their picking hand. I thought, I'm gonna be completely honest here, I thought I was being really smart and I was pulling this off of the collar. If you pull hard enough, this will actually dislocate from the actual collar itself and it will scratch your collar. But I was like, I don't care. I'm doing something ingenious. I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna put it on the back side of the collar and lo and behold, it worked. And then one day I was playing around with my master lock and the master lock leashy tool has a really hard time fitting into master lock M1 keyways due to manufacturing uh, differences from the master lock and the collar slipped forward. And I thought, well, that's weird. I didn't know that was adjustable. And lo and behold, that is what the set screw is for. The set screw is designed for you to be able to reverse this tensioning arm. You don't have to remove the tensioning arm from this tool. So now this, this hole that the tensioning arm is on typically is a little bit offset. So keep in mind that when you do move the tensioning arm back onto the other side of your leashy tool, that you're not gonna be able to do it this way. You are gonna to have to put it on this way and that these two arms here are going to go, go past the center point of the actual uh, pick blade here. I'm sorry, I don't have the proper terminology here, but you'll figure it out. Just use the set screw and remove it and place it to the other side. So we'll go ahead and move on. So knowing that, I have decided to go ahead and take all of my tensioning arms and move them to the opposite side which is the right side. So now that I can pick conventionally. Going back to our information, anybody that is looking to purchase these that are located in the United States, you can find the suppliers on Leashy's website, which is originalleashy.com. And I will provide a link down in the description below. And you can go to Genuine Leashy, but that website, it just never works for me. Some of these green ones that are supposedly the green label picks are from Genuine Leashy. I guess for a time they dabbled in a website that was Leetsi Kin uh, Tool or Leetsi Chin Tool. And if you go to that website, I'll provide a link down below. That is a dead link for me. I don't know if it's a um, if it's a restriction, if I need to use a virtual private network to navigate to that website, but I don't understand what is going on with Genuine Leashy, which are the green labels, or the website that's provided on Leashy Kin as of July of 2023. Neither website is very helpful. This website, Leashy Kin Tools, is not accessible. And the genuineleashy.com, all it, it's 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 kind of a broken website in the sense that none of the links really work, and you can't buy product directly from their website. It's just not a good website. So a lot of my tools are the red sticker tools, and these are the originalleashy.com tools, and that seems to be an easier website to navigate. Um, but regardless, you cannot buy direct from China. Uh, to my knowledge, at least not as an individual buyer, maybe as a wholesaler. So if you are looking for a distributor, here's a list of distributors in America. And my favorite distributor currently at this moment is lockpicks.com. They're currently owned by the company called Brokage. Brokage is a locksmith supplier. They make snap guns. They make, they, they have a whole line of, of locksmith tools that they've been selling to the public. The very first lockpick set I ever purchased in 2007, while I was stationed in Iraq, in Altakatum, Iraq, was from lockpicks.com. Probably because I got onto a, a computer that was available and I Googled where to buy lockpicks and lockpicks.com was the first thing to pop up. When I tell people about lockpicks.com, they say, where's the best website to buy lockpicks from? And I just tell them lockpicks.com. And they look at me kind of weird, but it is actually owned by Brokage and they are one of the largest locksmith distributors in the entire world. And they have, in my opinion, compared to the rest of these, HL Flake's a big one, CLK is a big one, uh, Best Key and American Key Supply are pretty big, Intermountain Lock Security is pretty big, and I don't see Clark Security on here, And uh, but UHS Hardware is pretty big. But of all of these, lockpicks.com to me is the best hassle-free one, and you get free shipping on any orders that are above $149 USD. And during July 4th, I was able to get these at a discount at $50, these lockpicks. So I bought three of them and got the free shipping. I will say though that Covert Industries, currently uh, owned and operated by Lockpicking Lawyer, 
Um, he was able to offer a lot of his picks at a discounted rate of $48. So he was trying to beat out brokerage. I don't know where he gets his leashy tools from, and I have received tools from him that have the green label and the red label. I got this Lockwood specifically from Covert Instruments. It was only available on Covert Instruments, this Lockwood was. I could not find this on lockpicks.com. That being said, if there are 11 in my collection and there are three to still be obtained, so there's 14 leashy tools that are available in the US for residential and commercial purposes, not all 14 are gonna be available on lockpicks.com and not all will be available from covertinstruments.com. Uh, you will have to find which website has the missing tools. So it was like trying to find the, the rings and Lord of the Rings, it was pretty funny. So um, I did have to go to different distributors, but when Covert Industries came out on July 4th and stated, hey, we have the best prices in town, I went to their website, sure enough, they were able to beat lockpicks.com by $2. So I would keep an eye out on covertinstruments.com and lockpicks.com during national holidays from Memorial Day, July 4th, maybe a Veterans Day, possibly, uh, definitely Black Friday sales. If you're looking to invest into these and you want to save money, this is the best time to do it during those sales because they are so expensive. They average $75 to $90 on the market MSRP, but you can get them as low as $50. The three that I am missing from my collection are for wafer style locks, and you can get those for as cheap as $30 when they are on sale or $50 when they're not on sale at this time of this video. As a form of education, there are a couple educational resources available. I currently have this Junior Lee Shi uh, Complete Guide, User's Guide. I can't fit it all in the frame. I'm gonna, this is the, the box that it comes in. It's really nice. I probably paid a, way too much for this. I'm pretty sure I paid at least 100. Comes with this soft cover book and it comes with this DVD. I'm sure 10 years ago it would have been a CD-ROM if this product was available. This book is amazing. Let me get it out of the case so we can talk about it real quick. This book is absolutely necessary if you wanna get into automotive leashy tools, but it is not necessary and it will not cover the residential or the commercial aspect of leashy tools. It is a really high quality book. I think it sells for well over 100 now. You can buy it on lockpicks.com. It has full color pages. It's obviously going to try to teach you how to use these specific style of automotive tools and try to market towards those as well. I have what's called the Firefly version of my Genuine Leashy Tools, which means this glows in the dark so you can be able to see your marks in the dark when you're trying to decode a key. The great thing about this is, is that it teaches you how to use each automotive leashy pick in here. And did you know that it's not as easy as picking and a residential or commercial leashy lock. It is so much more difficult and involved trying to pick automotive locks that I am so glad I bought that book and I didn't even look at it for the first time until a couple months ago. I've had it for five years. When you are picking these wafer style or track style uh, laser cut keys and so forth, any type of automotive tool that, that you're trying to pick, you have to pick it in a particular sequence on the top. Let's say it would be like one, three, five, and uh, seven, and then you'd have to pick the bottom wafers, two, four, and six, but you would skip 10, just weird stuff like that. And the book goes into description of that. So if you are getting into automotive leashes, I would highly recommend purchasing the book. There is a, a secondary supplement to that book that is spiral bound that I have not purchased yet, but uh, comes with a DVD as well. But it is, it's an entire uh, own set of tools. It's its own set of system of tools. However, they are becoming more affordable. When I started venturing into buying automotive leashy tools, they were $150 on average. Now you can uh, get them for as little as $40 because um, I guess just because of the manufacturing process and distribution process has become more affordable. All right. Well, do these things actually work? Let's talk about that. Um, if, In my opinion, I'm just going to come out there and say it. If you have three American padlocks, uh, American company padlocks, and you have the AM5 right here, you are probably going to be able to pick one out of three, maybe two out of three, but you're going to struggle with all three in my experience. If you have an M1 keyway master lock, if you have three of them, you will be able to pick one with the M1 leashy tool, but not all three. 
And the reason is, is that we are limited by the type of tension that we can apply. When I pick a master lock, I have the option of picking bottom of keyway tension or top of keyway tension, which gives me different binding order among the key pins that I'm trying to pick. However, when I'm applying tension with an M1 leashy pick, I'm only able to provide bottom of keyway tension as it pertains to the style of this pick as it fits into the tool. Now I can remove the collar and move the tension over to the left side and apply uh, binding tension in a different, um, uh, I guess, perceived area of force. I'm still uh, applying the same clockwise rotation, but the force is being applied a little bit differently and I have seen success with that. That being said, if you are struggling using these leashing picks, it's almost certainly 90% of the time is going to come from your uh, ability to apply correct tension that is required for that particular lock. And we will talk about that right now. So I have an American padlock. This is a green belt lock on the Reddit lock picking system, which is why it has the, the tape wrapped around it. It's just an AM5 keyway. Let's take our American lock and I'm going to insert it. Sometimes you, we will struggle trying to get these leashy picks in as long as the shoulder of my leashy pick here. This is the shoulder and some of these don't have this. Some of these just have a flush, but um, I'm looking now, no, they all have this. So this is the shoulder. We want this to be butted up against the first pin and we want this to be this corner right here to be butted up against the actual uh, plug face. So let's try that. Yep, so it's butted up. I'm gonna open up the tensioning arm and my tensioning arm is opposite side because I like to use my index finger for tensioning, which makes it so much easier. And I'm going to start off with pin one. That was counter rotation. So as I'm feeling the counter rotation, my middle finger and my thumb are reacting to that spool pin. Start with two. Two is not moving. Start off with three. That was counter rotation and pin three is set. Let's go to pin four. Kind of rotation, pin four is set. Let's go to pin five. Up, oh, kind of rotation. I felt movement in the plug and nothing yet. Let's go check these pins. Pin four, I dropped pin four. Okay, let's go back to pin three. Nothing, nothing. Let's try pin five again. I lost, I dropped some pins. So let's go back to one. Nothing on two, three four, five, and I got it. So American locks are, you're able to pick them. I do have American locks that I cannot pick with this leasey tool. I need to play around with different uh, tension, but um, serrated pins I've noticed I personally struggle with, you may not. I think the spool pins are a little bit easier to detect, but I'm also just now getting into the practice of picking with my index as the tensioning finger now that I know that this collar is designed to be removable. Let's move on to master lock. Master lock, for some reason, I always have trouble getting my leashy pick into the lock. And I think it's due to the, 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 the low tolerances in the manufacturing process of these cylinders. They are made in Mexico and they are very cheap cylinders. So let's give this a try. Nothing on one, nothing, a uh, little bit on two, okay. Nothing, three is springy, four, binding. We should have had two set. Nothing on one still, nothing on three. Let's go back to two. Two is set now, so two and four should be set. Let's go back to one, click out of one, click out of three, let's go back to one. Okay, and I got one, so that was good. All right, let's talk about Schleg. This is a Covert industry cylinder. It's a five pin. I don't honestly remember if I have any um, security pins in this or not. Let's just pretend that I don't. And we're gonna use the SC1 for five pin. Let's give that a try. Again, I'm using clockwise tension. Or, yeah, clockwise tension with my index finger. I'm, when you're inserting these tools, you cannot just shove these things into the keyway. You're gonna have to lift up here and hold the picking arm back so it doesn't interact with the pins and get stuck, and then you insert it into the keyway. Okay, Schleg, let's go with one, two, three, four, five, one, two, 
three, four, five, one. I'm not feeling anything. So let's start with five. One, or five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. And that's what you're gonna get a lot out of these picks. Okay, oh, I was able to get it. I was trying to explain that sometimes you are just not gonna get any pins to bind. So what do we do? We change our tensioning. Instead of trying to pick clockwise, I would pick counterclockwise. And if I can get it to pick, then I'd pull the tool out. And then if, I, if it was uh, actuating a locking mechanism, such as a bolt or a latch, then I would pull out my plug spinner and I would flip it to the opposite direction. Let's try counterclockwise real quick. Let's go with one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. There's nothing, so I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna start back at number five. Well, five, four, three, nothing on three, two, one. That was weird. I think I overset that one. And I have nothing left, so let's start that again. Let's try it again. Now I'm gonna apply more tension. I have to be willing to change my tension with leashy picks. Start off with light, then medium, then little, then variable tension, and then if it doesn't work, you're gonna to have to switch to counterclockwise or the opposite of whatever direction you were picking. And let's try it again. One more time. Five. Now I'm using really hard tension. You can see my hands shaking. Four. I need number three to bind. Three. I got it this time. Got to back off that tension. Gets two. I think I overset two. There we go. So one thing we learned watching us pick a five pin Schlegg core is that we are going to experiment with not only clockwise and counterclockwise, but we have to experiment with different levels of tension. Light tension may not bind any pins. Medium tension will bind some pins. High amounts of tension, you're gonna get the most amount of pins to bind. And that's how I pick lock single pin picking with the lifter hook. But um, we tend to bend a lot of our picks. This is a really great option for not bending picks and for not bending your tension wrench. This is a very good stout product. Let's take a look at quick set. I actually, of all the locks that I've been practicing picking, quick set I've actually had the hardest time. Quick set and master lock. And I would have to deduce that because there's such loose tolerances in the manufacturing of these cylinders that that's why I'm having such a hard time. You would think quick set would be easier, but it's not. American lock was the easiest one that I have. So, Let's try nothing on one. Quick out of two, nothing on three, nothing on four, five, nothing on one, two, three, four, five. Nothing. Start off with five. Five, four, three, two, one. Nothing. Two, I dropped something. Nothing. Let's try again. Let's see here. Nothing on one. Let's go to two, three, skip four, go to five. Let's go back to one. Nope. Try that again. Nope. Let's try counterclockwise. In theory, people would say, oh, that'd be the easiest lock to pick. You would think so, but I have trouble with it. There we go. Got it. So I would just pull this out, put a plug spinner in, and get it to jump. 
the shear line and, and let that go. Last one we're gonna pick on camera is let's use the SC4, which is a six pin. And this is a commercial Schleg lock. And we're going to pick that. I'm going to scan up. And this is on a, a lock stand. This is a commercial uh, lever style uh, lock. It is locked in the back. It's not actuating the latch. So let's give that a try. Also, let's go ahead and talk about this. If I were to encounter an F style of lock or this lever style lock, and it is installed to the side like this, I'm gonna have a really hard time picking this. Not only is this a six pin lock with really good tolerances, um, being that it's a commercial Schleg cylinder, even though it doesn't have security pins like most uh, commercial Schleg cylinders, it still has a slightly paracentric keyway. That means the keyway of a Schleg cylinder looks like this or this. I have to be able to, I have to, be able to pick around the warding of the keyway. And so that's really hard to do. Now try to do it at a 90 degree angle compared to what you're normally used to. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't think I can pick this single pin picking at this angle. That's hard, six pins with this uh, high level of quality of a, of a core, that's hard. If this was a quick set, it'd be different, but it's not. It's not a four pin master lock. It's not a five pin quick set. This is a six pin commercial uh, Schleg. So we are going to use our leashy tool. And I think that's where these really shine is uh, circumstances like that. Because I, I, this is awkward trying to get my finger all the way over here. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to just pick this uh, counterclockwise and it should still release my uh, latch there. So let's apply counterclockwise tension. Nothing on one, nothing on two, three, nothing on four, nothing on five. Six is my first binding pin. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. I got it. I'm telling you, this makes lock picking easy. It makes it easy. Well, let's finish up this video. This is a longer video than I anticipated. Who are these picks for? These picks are for anybody that is picking locks as a hobby. These are for locksmiths. These are for government personnel, military personnel, collectors. I think they are a viable option. However, they are not the, the one-stop solution. You're gonna find lots of locks that you are not gonna be able to pick with these just for the simple fact you cannot get pins to bind. What do you do in that circumstance? If you cannot get your pins to bind, it's easy. You move to a different process. Um, we have single pin picking. We have raking. We now have leashy picks, which is single pin picking, but it's, it's, it's the same, but different. We uh, have bumping. We have snap guns. We have vibrating pick guns. We have key impressioning. There's probably a good 10 things that we can do to manipulate the key pins of a modern day pin tumbler style lock that do not include bypassing or destructive entry. I do believe that leashy tools are a viable option of those 10 things. If I were to encounter a lock, I'd probably start raking first. If I can't rake a lock open within 20 seconds, I would then probably start using, pull out a leashy pick and see if I can single pin pick it with a leashy pick. If I cannot get it to pick with a single pin leashy pick, or excuse me, single pin pick it with a leashy pick, I would probably then start trying to single pin pick it because I can offer different types of tensioning um, more accurately with just a top of the keyway tensioner for single pin picking than I can with this bottom of keyway tensioning that we're using on this leashy pick. Um, if I cannot pick it, then I would probably start pulling out bump keys. I'd probably start pulling out the pick gun, and then I'd probably see if I can impression a key. If I can't do all that inside of five or 10 minutes, then I would be looking at either destructive entry, or I'd be looking at a bypass, or I'd be looking for a different door to enter. I know that certain residential houses, for some reason, the back door is easier to enter than the front door. Same thing with vehicles. The, 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 
front passenger side door is easier to bypass than the driver side door for various reasons we don't need to discuss here. There's always more than one way to bypass or enter a lock. I really believe that Leashy tools are revolutionary and they have, I think that they are a wonderful addition to locksmithing and lock sport. I think they are worth your time and your money as long as you put in the time to practice and use these. Do not forget that you can rotate and flip the tensioning arm so you can use your index finger or your thumb in a more traditional style as you would with padlocks and have fun out there and, and, and enjoy collecting these things. It's like Pokemon trying to find these things. You got to have them all. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm Sandman. Check out my Instagram link in the description down below. If you're new, please hit that like button and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments how I did in this video. If there's anything that you know about Leashy Tools that I didn't cover in this video, let me know what you would like me to discuss moving forward. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care.